Welcome back to Life and Style. This is Statistic Tuesday. I'm sure you had an amazing time on performing arts and the conversation should be explosive. If you want to follow that conversation, it's at KTN Life and Style on Facebook. KTN Life underscore style on Twitter and Instagram. SMS is 22840. And definitely, we've got something to showcase you know how to get us use our whatsapp number send us uh, you know a voice note send us a video it's zero seven zero zero five seven four seven four seven right now though we are all about canvas and paint on paintbrush and i've got elsa in studio karibu sana thank you so much amazing work i'd say and, and i have a few pieces that i pick out of something mm -hmm. that i haven't seen ah. on the show before mm -hmm. but before we do all of that maybe you should introduce yourself mm -hmm. a bit of background when you started or uh, got into arts uh -huh. thank you um so first of all i'd like to say i really enjoyed the music oh you yeah, did it is a fresh, uh, <laughs> fresh breath of air you know yeah okay. so my name is elsa keegan um, I'm, a, I'm a graduate from the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I studied art and design. Um, I started getting into art since I was little. And you know, as Picasso says, everyone is born an artist. It's only it's when you grow up that you know who the real artists are. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is staying an artist when you grow up. Uh, so when I was young, um, I, I stumbled upon art. Mm -hmm. um, and how I got nurtured was, you know, out of chance. When I was in school, I, I got to trace a picture. Okay. And, then, and then I presented it to, to one of my teachers and said, you know, I drew this from my imagination. Ooh. Yeah, so Ooh. I was quite a liar. <laughs> yeah, but then since the teacher showed interest and my mom was called to school and the teacher said, you know, this kid has a talent in art. So I thought about it and I was like, mm, what do I do? Yeah, I cannot just let that pass. So maybe I should take an interest in this. Yeah. And I never looked back. So since then, I've been doing art. Um, when I got into um, high school, I took it with a passion. Mm -hmm. um, and my teacher back then um, in Nakuru High School, her name was Jacqueline Kisato. She took me under her wing and taught me the skill and technique I needed to progress. Um, then I transferred to another school, mm -hmm. Musingu High School in Western. Right. So when I was there, um, I was exposed to different competitions. Um, and in all the competitions I, I took part in, I won. Uh -oh. So since then I knew maybe this is, this is, is what it. I want. Yeah, this is where my heart is. So after winning competitions, when, when we were doing our secondary certificate education, our exam, um, I got to be the first, the best student in art and design in the country. In the country? In the country. We, so we're sitting with champions over here. Just a little. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, that's really good. Uh -huh. So I was taken in by Mm -hmm. um, so I interned in the university program, um, but then while I was, it was such an, an eye opener. Um, I was not doing anything related to art, mm -hmm. so I was doing banking. Mm -hmm. So I was a teller for, for a year, and then after the year, um, I got into the communications department. Ah. But that opened my eyes, like, is this what, what I want to do? Is mm -hmm. this where I want to be, um, mm -hmm. behind a desk, day in, day out, time and again? Probably not. So I'm a free spirit. I want to create. So that is when I went to the university and did art and design. Okay. And in relation to gaining ground in, in graphics, um, in illustration, I also got to nurture my artistic skill. That's really important, the fact that you decided to go to school. You had it in you. You had won many competitions. You were the best in, in the country in mm. art and design. But you took, time to, you, you, you took time and went back to school to study. Mm and perfect your art. Most of the artists you see out there, most of them I've had on the show, mm -hmm. they say, they, and they're equally good. Mm -hmm. They've gone on YouTube, Google, and that's how they've perfected their art. Mm -hmm. What would you say about them comparing to someone who went to school for this? Um, so I wouldn't really like to draw comparisons okay. based on they are better or this other group is better because all of them have their pros and cons. But then what I usually get is when you go to school, the main reason why I went to the university um, was to get the contacts. Mm. So the people you interact with, um, you know, when you take a mixture of the academia and then the people you meet on the ground, you have a rich pool of resources you can count on. So going to school exposed me to different people who had different sets of skills. Mm -hmm. And when I come to the field, I get to interact with fellow artists who have a totally different set of skills, which I can draw from. So having this pool together gives me a wider scope on where I can set my foot on. 
Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about your art. What kind of art do you do? Is there a particular form of art or mm -hmm. painting that you've adopted or you're a free spirit again? Well, I am pretty much a free spirit. Okay. So I'm very dynamic in my choice of materials, in my choice of tools. So my artworks range from oils on canvas, acrylics on canvas like this one, mixed media, graphite on paper, and charcoal on paper. Okay. Let's touch with this particular one. Mm -hmm. Quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. And they all seem so relaxed. And it looks like a normal day. Mm -hmm. This is what our mothers would do to us when we yes. were little. Mm -hmm. What form of art is this? Um, so this is abstract expressionism. Mm -hmm. So what I try to do with my paintings is just capture emotions and invoke thought. So in every piece, like what I want to achieve when, when someone is looking at my pieces is mm -hmm. for them to ask themselves questions. Why did I choose this certain subject? Why are they having this certain pose? Mm -hmm. What is the energy behind the painting? What is the artist trying to tell me? So if I will just show you an art, an art piece, okay. um, let's put aside the portraits and just mm -hmm. look at the paintings. Okay. So if you can come and see my painting for one second and then look away, then I have not achieved my goal. Mm. Yeah, so like in this one, it is just a calm feeling. So when I was doing this, I was in campus. Mm -hmm. and I was about to clear my education. So I had this coming feeling that, you know, I am going through the system, I am finishing the system, so what next? So when I did this, I was keeping in mind the daily happenings. Um, when, for the people who are out of campus, what usually happens when you're having a chill day? You know? Yeah, you yeah. know you've captured the, the, the hands of uh, the lady who's doing her mm. hair the way the fingers are exactly. So did you have a picture or did you tell someone to just, let me just see how you do it? Surprisingly, I just look at people ah. and then I imagine them. So what happens is I have a bit of a, I, I, I don't like how the art industry is taking shape right now mm -hmm. because most of the people um, refer to photographs. So I don't know, it's a good thing um, in building your career, Yes, but then the role of art is to educate the society, is to pass a message. So as an artist, I'm trying to pass a particular message. Mm -hmm. So I don't like to just look at a photo and then copy paste mm -hmm. unless I can infer and get my inspiration from that piece. All right. Yeah. So okay. this is something that I haven't seen on this set. I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but I see it's I, I can see a portrait. Mm -hmm. But that's where it ends. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this one is called Marging Lines. Marging Lines. Yeah, that is just okay. the title of the piece. But oh. then it's a, it's a pen drawing. And then what I was trying to achieve with this is to show the unity in diversity. Mm -hmm. So in life, you know, we are people from diverse backgrounds. Okay. Yeah, we come f we, with a set of very many diverse skills, mm -hmm. opinions. But then if all of them converge, in unity, then we come up with something, you know? So, so all these lines came up with, it, with the a portrait, face of yes. a man. Yes. Wow. And that is actually my friend. Oh, <laughs> wow. What did you have to say about this? <laughs> like you, you, you couldn't like, have just taken time to just- To just draw. draw. It, it's just me. <laughs> yes. So, well, I like to try different things. Okay. Because I feel being tied to a particular skill or a particular material tools is a bit restrictive. Okay. So trying new things time and again renews my spirit. Talking about new things, mm -hmm. I'm looking at uh, another painting uh, of yours mm -hmm. that is, um, I'd say mixed media. See the way I'm, I'm, I'm acting like a, like a, like a You're really an, an expert. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because I see that, the, is it the eyelids mm -hmm. that are different? What, what material did you use there and what was the inspiration behind that? Um, that painting is called The Cry. The Cry. The Cry, yes. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing that, you know, I had a lot of emotions. So I was just from London. And then when I was there and witnessing how art is shaping, you know, the economy of the country, mm -hmm. coming back to Kenya, I was feeling a bit ripped off. Okay. Yes. So what are we doing as artists to make our country better? Mm -hmm. Like we have people, the, the divide between the rich and the poor is just so wide. And how can we bridge the gap? We don't know. Mm. So when I was doing that, um, the eyes, I, I used coins. Okay. So the eyes are coins, the, <laughs> the eyelashes are strings, mm -hmm. 
Yes. And then the painting itself is a is a mix of acrylic and oil. Ah. Yeah, and that piece was just talking about so there's a slum down yes, there. There's a slum. And just... yes, so there's a slum at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then the people are are crying, like, you know, help us. But then in their eyes they just see money. Oh These are little houses here. Yeah. There's a slum right there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so this is a slum mm -hmm. and they have a begging pause, like, please help us. Yes. But then what are they asking for? They're asking for money, told by their eyes. So those oh, are coins. Oh, coin. Yeah, so they're asking for money. So I was thinking about, you know, when I am driving and then someone comes and asks me for money and this person is walking, has all the ability to do something to make their lives better, what are you asking me for? You know, so it's, it begs us to question. So how can we empower the people who feel they are disadvantaged mm -hmm. so that they make something of their life? You know, listening to you speak reminds me of a conversation we had uh, just before we started this conversation, uh -huh. like this interview, and you're like, Bukhali, just make sure that we talk about the challenges because I am so, I need, I need. <laughs> okay, fine. This is your chance. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about the challenges of art. So, um, first of all, many people know me as a fine artist, mm -hmm. but I am actually a designer. <laughs> Okay. So I do graphic design um, besides fine art. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing I realized with art is we have, there's a structural disparity in the market. So structurally the market is not right. It doesn't make the artist, you know, sell and make a living from their work. And then we have three, like we have three, three reasons why this is not right. Mm -hmm. So the first one is that, you know, the market there's no middleman in the market. Mm. Yeah, so in art, we have four categories. We have art deco, which you can go to the supermarket and buy any art piece and just put it on the wall. We have art f by, you know, non-career artists. Okay. You'll find them in the beach galleries, you know. I just did one piece and I want you to sell it for me. You have art by emerging artists and mid-career artists where I may fall in and most of my artist friends fall in. And then you have art by high-end career artists. So the problem is that if you're in the market, um, the quality of the art piece is judged by the price. And then the consumer cannot assess the quality outside price. Okay. Yeah, so one thing I realized when I was doing art professionally is that, you know, price is not, it's not predictable. It's mm -hmm. not obvious. Mm -hmm. So art is a veblen good. And because it's so, I get to dictate how much I want to sell my piece. Mm -hmm. um, for established artists, so high-end artists, that is okay. Because they've been in the industry for long. They can yes. price it at 1.2 million and, uh -huh. you know, we will buy it. They're rich. <laughs> but then for people in category three, emerging artists, you know, we have, we have a challenge. Because how will I know how much to sell my piece? Mm -hmm. And how many pieces will I sell mm -hmm. so that I sustain myself? So that At is a what question. What point do you f do you get to to realize that you now I moved from imagining now I'm high end? Ah, uh, um, so there are three things that usually de determine the price of art okay. and how your career has progressed over time. Mm -hmm. So that's the number of years you've practiced art. Ah, okay. Who are the people interested in your art? Who is mm -hmm. showing interest? Mm -hmm. How many collectors are willing to buy your art? Mm -hmm. And then, which galleries are showing your work? What, how, how does your work perform in auctions, you know? So I have not even taken part in an auction. So <laughs> I am not even, I am not close to being but a high artist. But at least you've showcased your, your yes. art in a gallery. Yes, Which I is have. an amazing thing. Yes, okay. yes. So, I think I think they've had, and mm -hmm. I, I think we also need to generate interest. And mm -hmm. I was talking to uh, an artist at, at um, a while back, and they told me that the hardest thing for them to do is actually put a price yeah. on their pieces of works. Like I cannot, I cannot put a price tag on my creativity. They, there's no price tag for that. True. There is no price tag for that. Okay, I'd like you to take a minute probably to just encourage or motivate or whatever you have to say for all the artists out there, mm -hmm. it's really who are in the same industry as you are. True. Um, so what I'd like to say is that, you know, art is a business like any other. That's true. And besides being a business, it's your conduit to channel your creativity. So take all the time you need to perfect your skill, you know, learn your craft and understand understand the business aspect of it, then you can progress. 
So I always hear that you need to give 10,000 hours to whatever you're doing to be a master at it. And this is no exception. That's true. Yeah, just give your all in it. And then what I usually want, what I usually tell all the people who ask me about art and how you make it in the industry is that don't conform. Don't try and read someone else's script. Try to actualize yourself. Be the best you you can be. Absolutely. And that's Social all. media platforms, how can people get in touch um, with you? Um, at Instagram, uh, you can find me at Elthad. Mm -hmm. you, you want to spell that? Yes, Elthad yeah. is E-L-S-A-R-D-T. There you go. Yes, Facebook, Elthad Keegan. Anywhere, Elthad Keegan. Keegan. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for coming to the show today, You're welcome. Elthad. Thank you. All right. Well, this has been Paintbrush. Remember, there is a business aspect to your passion. That is what you need to consider. Do not conform to the industry. Be yourself. Be true to your brand. Be true to your art. Well, this has been Paintbrush. We're taking a very short commercial break. When we come back, visual arts with Aisha. Thank you.